Where is this market heading to market watcher Dan Schaefer and Fox Business's Deirdre Bolton and David Asman? Dan, you're the man when the market goes down. I mean, you know, you're, you're always giving us those cautionary warnings about just how inflated this market is. Is this yeah. the big one? No, this is just the beginning. It's not the big one. I think the market could start to rally again from here or early uh, in April and try to make another top again. And then at that point, my target is in June will be the end of the rally of the last nine years. That's that's. What so I ironically, you're saying a double top formation, which is typically bearish, Correct. could actually be the signal. And ironically, yeah. le this week, I think we had a double bottom on the S&P, exactly. which is holding up pretty yeah, good the, so the, far. The averages came down to a lot of the moving averages. They held. They looks good. There's a lot of negative pessimism right now, so it's bullish for the market. But long term, I'm saying sell the rallies. That's my opinion. You know, Deirdre, is interesting because uh, the, we've had a variety of reasons for the market to be under pressure. First, the 10-year yield's getting near 3%. <laughs> right. And then yesterday it was like, the 10-year yield is down like, really? too much. What's right, going on? Right, right, right. It's like, you know, yeah, there has the been Federal a Reserve is going to hike rates four times. The Federal Reserve doesn't need to hike rates. I mean, almost every other week or day, there's a new reason du jour. I agree. And it does seem as if volatility has just been cranked up, right? Because for the last few years, you did have some data points every now and then that could have given investors pause that didn't. But I think since February and that two-week brutal sell-off that we saw, you now have these little worries creeping in. And I've actually been following tech, as you all know, very closely. And I think it's too early to say whether there's really been a shift in sentiment. But the fact that so many tech companies, the ones we all know, at least some follow, right. may be prone to regulation. That's beginning to shift sentiment for a group that has really been the market's bright spot, even in some of the but, past years. And the years. problem has been, of course, there's been no one that grabbed the rally baton, right? Yes. I mean, before a while, everyone thought financials would uh, be able to take the market higher if tech were to stumble. Right. But financials have been it. hit just as hard as them. You know, Dave, uh, January 26, President Trump went to Davos mm -hmm. and he threw down the gauntlet. That was the peak of the market. Uh, and since then, he's, he's done things or said things that have gone against traditional, certainly conservative yeah. economic orthodoxy. Is that playing a big role here? I think, I think it is in the, in the temporary point. But, you know, when history is written about this era, they're going to look at this as just the beginning. We just had a jobless claim uh, today, 45-year low, a jobless claim at the 45-year low. Yesterday, we came out with a 2.9 percent revised up GDP figure. We had a four, you know this very, you've been talking retail for months now. Yeah. We had a 4% increase in retail sales. I mean, we are in an economic boom period right now, and I don't, I think all these other things, we've seen how, how Trump has changed his language on terrorists. We, we heard all, by the way, we got Peter Navarro coming out in the four hour. I want to plug that, uh, because at first Peter Navarro came out saying, you know, there are going to be no exceptions to the tariffs. Of course, we saw all these exceptions, sure. and now we have a South Korean trade deal uh, without any tariffs at all. So my point is, all of the fears of the market that that there's going to be something at the market are, are overridden, uh, overshadowed by the fact that this is the most business-friendly administration we have had since Ronald Reagan. You can't ignore that, and I think it's just beginning. You know, what's ironic, and I'll let you make this point, but I want to throw this in, because today we had the final revision of the uh, sentiment number mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for March, and current conditions <laughs> hit an all-time record. People have never been this optimistic in the history of that report but expectations for six months down the road actually went down. And I think that points to the headline risk. People in the anxiety, people feel amazingly great right now, but they're just not sure. And how much of that, again, was, uh, uh, by the way, we're showing uh, President Trump here. That's a live uh, 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 right now. He's departing for Ohio. He's going to be uh, pitching infrastructure. And the infrastructure stocks, by the way, having a very good session led by U.S. Steel, which is up 5%. He's Dan, got his earpiece in. He's listening to Fox Business while he's mounting those stairs. I just want to let the audience know that. Wave if you're listening to Fox <laughs> Business. Hey, good for you, Charles. Wow, you got it. All righty. So, Dan, help so, us out here. So the, the issue, you know, I hear Dave's points about all these great numbers and yeah. all these historic lows. But if you look at some of the numbers that come out of Europe, about around Italy, around the world, they don't look so good. Canada doesn't look so good. And yet the market usually predicts the future. And if things were so rosy, Dave, and you, you're familiar with the, the yield curve, the 10-year Treasury versus the 30-year yield versus the current yield on the two-year, 
they're way out of whack. And they're that that but Dan, is flat. You're sounding like an economist, not no, like I'm a not business an person. Business I'm people a recognize that, that we have so yeah, but business people from, recognize that we have so few regulations right now compared to what we had just a year and a half ago that there is a clear road where there was one that was cluttered with all these regulations and all these taxes. Yes, we have problems with the tax code, but we got phase two of the tax code coming in, which means that the, the overall rates are going to come down again. I just think that we are seeing a very bright economic future, and that right now is being underplayed by the, the fear in the market. I agree with you that there's a great economic future, but it's not the next two years. It will be later. Right now, we've got a lot to go through. People Which means are not now's spending. the time to buy, right? Well, it depends on what you're buying. Yeah. You know, people, if you look at the commodity crops, have all declined dramatically. But if you're going to hold for two or three years, now would be if the time to buy. If you're going to hold for two or three years, you're going to have buying opportunities. But if you think that you're going to make money in the next two years, I think it's going to be a rough crowd. Okay. That's a great and the, point. And the reason, and I'm, and I'm saying this very seriously, the bond market's the deepest market in the world. Okay, and when there's a lot of debt that's been issued, mm -hmm. there's a reason why the 10 year and the 30 year yields are not moving up. In fact, I believe by the end of the year, the 10 year yield could be back below 2%. Hmm. That's the way the trading seems to be setting up. That's very dangerous for an economy going forward. I also think the U.S. dollar is going so to rally. You'd be buying short term bonds now. I'm long, look at the bonds rallying today on that report that came out this morning. Why are they rallying? In fact, I watched all morning before I came in here. There's been a very strong bid since 8 o'clock this morning in the 30-year Treasury market. I guess market. the question I don't know for why. our viewers though, is should they take their cues from the bond market or should they take their cues from corporate America and the, and the data that keeps coming out that suggests we are in, in economic rally mode right now. And, Big you know, of course, occasionally you'll have a hiccup here or there, but for the most part, uh, it looks like everything points to higher wages. Everything points to the economy growing really well. You mentioned GDP. That number would have been over jobless 3%. claims, jobless way down. claims that is set since 1973. So, so Deirdre, how does someone reconcile all of this, particularly as an investor? Because I, you know, I always want. I'm always cautious about whipsawing people or having yeah, people take a, a loss to, to avoid it's a two-week dip timing, and then right? regretting it a week later, or a month later, or a year later. And I'm so glad you're bringing that up because for most people, let's just say the people who have 401ks or pensions, they have set it and forget it, right? They, they go into, let's call it passive investors, right? They go into products that more or less mimic the indices performance. So I take your point, you know, yes, if you don't need that money in the next two to three years, yeah, keep buying, keep adding. If you're close to retirement, maybe you have a conversation with your financial advisor. But even right, in 401ks, they're dollar cost averaging. So you're going in, even if it goes lower, you want it to go lower if you're an investor in a 401k now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's the other investors who always seem to get whipsawed, particularly those who are late to the game and feel like once I buy, it goes down. I hear it all the time.